Well, the big day is finally here. Uh, it is about 8 o'clock in the morning um, on January something. I don't even know what day it is, mid-January, and we have our weather to the Bahamas and we are leaving today. Bill's just doing some morning chores, taking apart our new drone. New toy. Which is gonna make getting to the Bahamas that much sweeter. It's gonna make our videos that much better, hopefully. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun with this thing. Finally, we can like get some aerial images of these islands that we're going to. Yeah, it fits well in the boat too. This one is like less than half the price of a regular drone because it's tiny. It doesn't do as much as a normal drone. Um, we gotta go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we hit that fridge. Thank God we changed our prop out. Um, we had four miles ago and it would have taken us probably an hour of our older color, but we were able to do it in about 45 minutes and we made the bridge with two minutes of spare. Last bridge of the ICW. Pretty exciting. Get out in that ocean, let me free. <laughs> The past four months have been one seemingly never-ending to-do list, and this morning we are finally crossing off the very last one. Goodbye land! And goodbye North Carolina! Mm -hmm. We won't see you until the spring. This area of North Carolina, Wrightsville Beach, is where we are right now. That's the inlet that we're using to get out in the ocean. It's absolutely beautiful. The water is very clear and greenish, but it's a very unique shade. Um, it's really pretty and I can see why so many people like, love this area. Another thing that I'm thinking about right now is how challenging it is to get out of inlets. Um, at least the ones around here. We're not even in very much wind and there's only, how much wind are we in right now? Next to nothing, like seven. We're going six knots, like one knot. And the current is with us? Uh, no, it's going against us. Okay. Ripping nice. in the inlet. It's just so much motion when you're trying to get out of one area of water that's like restricted into the open ocean. Um, the water flow, the current, the wind, um, everything is really exacerbated. I'm really glad that it's as light wind as it is because it's it could definitely be much worse. Such a beautiful day. It's gorgeous. I think we're in light air for the first 24 hours, so this will kind of be our trip to the Gulf Stream. We are currently motoring. The reason we chose this weather window is we have to get a Gulf Stream crossing in, and a Gulf Stream crossing occurs about 130 miles off the coast of North Carolina. So we got lucky enough to have a day with no wind, so we're planning on motoring overnight, um, and then the wind's gonna start filling in out of the west, which is still fine for crossing the stream here. Um, and hopefully we're clear of it by nine o'clock tomorrow morning when the wind starts going to the north. And that's when you don't want to be in the Gulf Stream. So we're taking advantage of this light air to motor to the stream. Hopefully have a nice, easy crossing, no, no crazy chop. And then uh, take the northerly and start sailing south fast. We didn't know it at the time, but our first night at sea would also mark the end of any chilling. This is like fucking fast. There's two boats 
on the AAS. Yeah. It's kind of weird here. We're threading a line between being conservative and aggressive because we're trying to get across the Gulf Stream as quickly as possible, but at the same time not have an uncomfortable ride or break something. Um, the wind was getting up to 15 apparently, so we threw a reef in the main. We're still doing 5.7, pretty good, but our VMG is coming down because we are starting to twist off to the east uh, because the Gulf Stream is pulling the bow. You see the difference here, though. See the bow's, bow's pointing at our course, and we're just being pulled off that way. Yeah. And that's the effect of the Gulf Stream. There's 20 degree difference between where the bow's pointing or where the boat's actually going. Overnight, conditions worsen, and sunrise brings true winds of 18 knots when the forecast called for eight. That was a relatively uneventful evening. Um, we had some autopilot alarms going off at the sea stage built, and we are close to exiting the Gulf Stream, I think. Um, the sea stage is still acting like it's current here, but we got to be close to getting out of it. The temperature has come down. The temperature is down to 75 from 78 or so. Not what the weather was supposed to be. No, as usual. I don't even know why we check the weather sometimes. I'm not happy. You're not happy? I mean, I just, I can't even function. My wind better go from behind soon. Make me breakfast. <laughs> having a little bit of a rough go at it still. How are you doing there, honey? Uh -huh. <laughs> she doesn't like this motion so much. And now we have a pretty big squall line coming at us. So there's that squall line chasing after us. As conditions worsen throughout the day, regular passage making activities, such as preparing a hot meal, are abandoned, and our attention turns toward only the absolutely necessary, such as sail adjustments and trips to the head. It's now blowing over 30 knots sustained, with gusts over 40 knots. The wind strength doesn't waver overnight, and unfortunately, on the second day of our passage, the unrelenting high winds cause the sea state to disintegrate further. Um, the wind is supposed to decrease gradually tomorrow the 18th, so I guess we have like another what that, 36 hours of this. It's a long time. It's a windy trip, I guess. Thanks, Bill. That just might be the understatement of the year. When I was just checking up on the bow, as I showed you guys, the furlong line is uh, getting pretty eaten. It looks like it's run uh, we're a little bit off and it's rubbing. Um, so I'm going to keep moving that because I really don't want to start the engine right now or depower the boat in these swells. And also I need to get rid of the pole, it looks like. So I'm going to raise the deeply reefed main, stabilize the boat, take the jib, uh, throw the jib up, rerun the line, take down the pole. And, uh, yeah, then get the jib back out by the pole and drop the main. Before Bill can make a move out to the bow, conditions worsen rapidly. Man, these waves are getting big. We just got slammed a couple times. Boat got knocked right over and everything went flying. The waves are steep and close together and big. I may need to go up there and hand stiffer, but just make sure we I can see him.
two turns into day three, and we're finally seeing lower winds. But the waves are steeper, and the morning brings new problems. So the jib line that had shape on it finally snapped. Um, kind of inevitable saw that coming. So last night was one of the hardest nights we've had um, yet. This is day three now, and this is definitely um, one of our hardest passages. Um, not the hardest, but the one with the most wind, for sure. Everything has been much more than predicted. This furling line snapping is really unfortunate uh, because there's no way we could have all the jib out. Still having auto autopilot failures, so I'm watching that. Come on. So Bill's on deck trying to find a way to um, just shorten the sail like manually because the wind is going to come more forward so even though it's only 20, 20 knots it's going to feel like a lot more it's going to bring it up and that's going to be the rest of the trip till we get in so the, i don't know how many miles we have left but probably 100 i want to say 150 or something um over 24 hours um so we definitely need a smaller jib. So unfortunate because we have a staysail on order. Uh, a staysail is a really small little sail that we would put on where the jib is now. Um, that's completely built for these conditions. Um, it wasn't ready in time before we left, but we didn't think we were going to need it because um, the predicted wind was 20 knots, which is a lot, but not that much. Like it's nothing we haven't been in, and it's very normal for this time of year. But 30, 35 knots sustained, and these kind of waves were just not at all on the prediction. So definitely could have used that sail. definitely need a jib because the wind has come down as predicted so something that was predicted actually did happen on this passage um, so he's just up on the bow trying to deal with that right now because um, he thinks that we might be able to use the part of the furling line before it snapped because it might be long enough to do that so that's what he's doing and I am incredibly seasick we're going maybe because we're going downwind i mean I've, I've been seasick this entire trip but i think now that i'm standing here and we're going downwind we pointed the boat to go downwind so it'll be less motion for bill while he's up on the bow um because when you're heading into the wind it's more healing so we're currently not going in the direction that we want to go in to get to the bahamas but basically we've been going too slow now ever since the furling line snapped and the we have to get into Eleuthera during daylight hours because it's a very difficult, um, uh, a really difficult, um, what do you call those things? The coral. You have to go in during the daylight. Um, so at the speed that we're going now, we wouldn't get in until dark. So that we can't, ha that can't happen. <laughs> it can't just be out at sea another night. And the main can't cut it because we're going upwind. You need a jib to be able to go upwind, so. Oh, I hope he can figure something out. We tried to go in a short way through a pass with some coral heads way too rough to do that. We just saw some 10 to 12 foot rollers. Maybe yeah, you can tell. There, yeah. See if I zoom in. Like water there. Oh yeah. I think I'm gonna destroy myself trying to surf that thing. That's insane. <laughs> Oh my god, look at the 
size of that wave. Gentle road. This is like being in the middle of the ocean. Oh my god. <laughs> I know. Like, I make we are witnessing the aftermath of sustained heavy conditions. These rollers are like being, they remind me of the transatlantic. Whoa. Oh, that was a seven month surf down that way. check out our page on Patreon. Also, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell notification. That way you'll know every time there's a new video. We'd really like to hear from you guys too, so leave us a comment on YouTube before you go.